few years ago, Margaret Walters once hosted a television special with this title, Heaven, Where Is It, and How Do We Get There? Now, sadly, no one who watched that show got any closer to heaven uh, from watching what was on television. But it does indicate the fact that there is a widespread uh, interest in heaven. Most everybody that I talk to expects to go to heaven. Listen to what people say in all kinds of context when somebody dies. Well, we know that they're in a better place. Oh, do we really know that? Many times it is spoken of someone who has never given any indication whatsoever in their life that they had any religious thoughts at all. But those around will say, oh, but, but we know that they're in a better place. No, we don't know that. Amen. Unless they know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. That, that's Christmas. Christmas really is important. Christmas is not just a holiday, but Christmas really is a holy day. A day that really should demand of us great, great thought and, and, and serious reflection about the reason for Christmas. Now, I, I love Christmas. I love the trappings of Christmas. I love trees and lights and tinsel and presents with my name on them. <laughs> but I love Christmas. I, I like all that goes. I like the hustle and bustle. I, I like the crowds a little bit. I, I like Christmas. But Christmas is not about trees or elves or snow or presents or credit card debt. Christmas is important not because it's part of the culture, but Christmas is important because of Jesus. Now we can enjoy, I, I taught our Sunday school class today, we're talking about joy. I really do believe that God intends for Christians to be happy. Now that's not the primary thing. God is much more concerned about my holiness than he is my happiness. But don't ever think that what God wants us to be are these sour, sad, oh, if I'm miserable long enough, I finally get to die and go to heaven. That is not the message that I get from the scripture, that, that's not what God intends for us. So I think, I think you can enjoy, I think you can enjoy Christmas. I'm not a bah humbug person. I think you can enjoy trees. So my Sunday school class, and one of the traditions that we had as I grew up as a kid was every year we went out and we got a Christmas tree. Not at the store, not at the lot, but we went out in the woods and we cut down a Christmas tree. One year, now this, this probably says something about who we are. You know, if you told this story in a lot of places, it wouldn't go over well. I think in Arkansas, it, it goes over better. One year, Mom and Dad went out during the day and got the tree. And when we got home, then we put it up, we decorated it. So they went out earlier to get the tree. And, and they, they went out to the place where we always kind of got the trees. And it was quail season. And, and my daddy is a quail hunter, and so he had his shotgun with him. Well, he got out there, that's important this story, because they got out there, they found the perfect tree, and he started to cut it down, and, and he was using a handsaw, and the handle on the handsaw broke. So he was trying to cut the tree down, and it wasn't working well, and he got frustrated, and then he thought, why am I wrestling with a saw when I've got a 12 gauge? And so he just backs off, goes boom, boom, and shot the tree down. <laughs> and so when we got home, that, that daddy had to take the broken handled handsaw and cut the end of it off because you can't nail the, 
the stand of the bottom of the tree when you shot it down with 12 gauge. And that, we, we talk about that every year. You remember the year that your daddy shot the tree down with a shotgun? Well, sure. Now, here, here's the strange thing. I really didn't think that was such an odd occurrence. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe, like I said, maybe that, that says something about the family. That it, I, I enjoy Christmas trees. Every year, Mama would say, when we bring the tree in the house, next year, we're not getting a big tree. And the next year, we'd come around, we'd go out and get a tree. She'd say, remember, this year, we're going to get a small tree. Matter of fact, I think what I want to do, I want to put the tree on the coffee table. And so I just want a, a small tree that we put on the coffee table. And okay. And so we'd go out, and we'd go out in the woods, and we'd find the perfect tree, a small one. Normally, we sawed it down. We, we only shot one down. But we, we cut the tree down. We'd all be happy we found the perfect tree. Mom was happy because it wasn't a big tree. And we'd get to the house and we'd go in and something happened between the car and the living room. And usually the key was, the, the, the time that you noticed it was when you started bringing it through the front door and it wouldn't fit. <laughs> and we'd get it in. Here's the coffee table sitting over here that we're going to put the tree on. And we'd get it in, and we'd stand the tree up, not on the coffee table, it's still on the floor, we'd stand the tree up, and it would go up, hit the ceiling, bend over. You had to cut the top off, you know, and Mama would say, next year, we're not getting a big Christmas tree. And that was a part of it. Man, I enjoyed that. We used to go, Mama would take us, we were kids, and we would have our allowance money, and she might have given us a little bit of money, but we'd take our lips, and she would help us, but we would buy presents. We'd buy a present for Daddy, we'd buy a present for our Siblings, we buy a present for my grandma and my grandpa and my aunt and my uncle. But but we'd buy those and we'd go home and we'd, we'd wrap those presents. I mean, I remember that. I remember, you know, we, we would shop and we'd look and we'd... It's special. Enjoy the goodies. Man, peanut butter fudge, chocolate fudge, chocolate peanut butter fudge. <laughs> you know, I, I enjoy it, but, but, as much as I enjoy it, that's not. I wanted it for a long time and asked for it. And it, it I just, I 
members were all special for Christmas. I remember some of those that weren't so special. I remember the year that my brother was born. <laughs> On Christmas. Now you're talking about running Christmas. Christmas so special in our family. We actually we had our big Christmas the, the week before, but it was on Sunday. We had Christmas with our family really the Sunday before because Mama didn't know for sure, you know, when this baby was going to be born. And, and uh, it was supposed to be born on the 23rd, and, and he was running a little bit late. And so on the 25th, we get up. Everybody in the family, not just us kids, but everybody in the family that year had a stocking. And we put our stockings up, and me and Donna had bought stuff to put in Mom and Dad's stockings, and, and uh, Mama always had stuff in ours. I, I, I had one of these uh, multi-level stockings. You know, I had a big one with a medium one hooked to it, with a little smaller one hooked to it, with a little bitty one hooked to it down at the bottom. Mama always had something for all of them, still does, and in the toe of the little one, she puts a quarter. Mama, if you're watching, I hope you've got your quarter. Funny thing, we remember Mama gave us a quarter. Things were a little bit better when I got a little bit older, and Daddy gave us $100 bills rolled up, little bitty, and with a ribbon tied on them. Daddy didn't wrap presents, he didn't bag presents, he didn't do anything, but he could take a $100 bill, roll up real tight, put a ribbon around it, and hang it in the tree. And we'd go in on Christmas morning looking for hours. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, we, we got up that Christmas morning, we did our stockings. The reason I remember it was on a Sunday is because after we got through doing our presents, our stockings, Daddy was stretched out across the bed looking at the funny papers. And Mama come calmly walking through and said, I think you need to take me to the hospital now. And she said it so calmly that Daddy didn't even look up from Beetle Baby. <laughs> and he said, really? Why is that? And she said, well, I started having some labor pains about an hour and a half ago. Well, why hadn't you said anything? Well, I didn't want to spoil Christmas. For the kids. Now, isn't it just like Mama? Yeah. See, I, I enjoy those. Christmas is special. But what is most special about Christmas is Jesus came. Right. And he came to save us and came to give us joy. Christmas is important. Christmas is history. The Old Testament tells us, uh, anticipates Christmas in Isaiah chapter 9. The Bible says, For a child will be born for us, a son will be given to us, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he'll, he will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. The Old Testament anticipated Jesus. The New Testament records the message of the coming of Christ. In Matthew chapter 1, the Bible says the birth of Jesus came about this way. You, you heard that story this morning in the drama, uh, and as you heard God's word shared there, after his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, it was discovered before they came together that she was pregnant by the Holy Spirit. So her husband Joseph, being a righteous man, not wanting to disgrace her publicly, decided to divorce her secretly. But after he had considered these things, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because what's been conceived in her is by the Holy Spirit. She'll give birth to a son, and you're to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Oh, we, we read that Galatians says, when the completion of the time came, or when the time was just right, God sent his son, Jesus, for us. And I preached on that a couple weeks ago and reminded you that in your life, when Jesus works, it is always just right and just the right time. That's how God does things. We often think, well, God, why couldn't you have done it here? Why couldn't you have done it there? Why? 
well, why don't you hurry up? What? Just know, when the time is just right, is when God works. Because that's kind of God that he is. World history accepts Jesus. You say, well, Brother Steve, I'm not sure about that. Look at your calendar. What year is this? This is 2020. Get ready to be 2021. I sure hope 2021 is a whole lot better than 2020. Amen. 2020 what? 2020 A.D. The year of our Lord. Before that it was B.C. Before Christ. I love the fact you read some uh, uh, academic uh, Journals and they're trying to do away with that. And so you'll see there is the BCE before the common era. And ACE after the common era or just common era. Trying to, you know, take Jesus out of it. I don't care what they call it. You know where the dividing line is? The coming of Jesus. Listen, even trying to ignore Jesus, you still got to accept Jesus. Why? Because it's history. It happened. It happened. Christmas is history. It's special. It's important. Christmas is exclusive. Why is Christmas, why is Christianity under attack? Real Christianity and the real message of Christmas is attacked because it is exclusive. read in Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 you'll call his name Jesus because he'll save his people from their sins. The very name Jesus Jehovah saves Yahweh saves God saves God the creator the source of life the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob the covenant keeping promise making God, that God saves through the person of Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, who is God with us. You've heard this morning, I think twice, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. What about John 3, 18? Anyone who believes in him is not judged. But anyone who does not believe is already judged because he's not believed in the name of the one and only Son of God. Acts says this. In Acts chapter 4, there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby you must be saved. One way to be saved, that's Jesus. People say, Brother Steve, that, that's kind of narrow, isn't it? it it's, a, it's extremely narrow. I mean, it's like that narrow. Do you really think that there's only one way to be saved? I do. With all that I believe, there is one way to be saved, that is by placing your faith and trust in Jesus as your Lord Savior. Well, well that's Narrow-minded. Well, it is. It's also simple. You get frustrated like I do when there are some directions given about it, and they tell you three ways, four ways, two ways. You ask somebody, you're going to their house. How, how do you? How do I get there? Well, you can go down and get on the interstate and go down here and get off. Or you can go here and, and turn to this road and go over this hill. That, or you can't. Don't tell me three ways. I'm probably not going to find it with your one way, but don't give me three. Just give me one. Just tell me how to do it. It doesn't have to be the easiest way. It didn't have to be the best way. It didn't have to be the best way on Friday or the best way in the morning or the best way in the evening. Just tell me a way that is sure and certain.
to get me there. I'm a little dense. Just give me a way. You get on Google Maps and you plug in an address and it gives you here's this way and it's going to be 13 minutes and this way is 17 minutes and this way if the traffic's not too bad. And it, I ignore all that. I just want a way. <laughs> give me one. I don't care if it's 13 minutes or 17 minutes. Give me a way. Because it's simple. Just give me a way. God loved us so much that when he gave us the message of salvation in Jesus, he made it easy. He didn't give us a way for Americans and a way for Africans and a way for Chinese and a way for, for Canadians. And a, no. He didn't give us a way for rich and a way for poor, a way for black or a way for white. He said, there is a way to be saved. You place your faith and trust in my son, Jesus. Oh, yeah. I get that. I can understand that. I may not understand all about it, but I can understand there's so you're telling me there's no other name I need to know. That's right. No other name. No other way. No. Just trust Jesus. Christmas is important because Christmas is exclusive. I share in, in, in our class about a happening when we were on a mission trip and at and they told us this was the mantra to be Thai, we're in Thailand, to be Thai is to be Buddhist. This is what they thought. To, tie, to be Thai is to be Buddhist. To be American is to be Christian. They thought all Americans were Christian. And except for a few that had been saved, they thought if you're Thai, you're Buddhist. And that really hit home. I was talking with a lady that had been saved about three weeks. And I prayed for her. And she asked me to write her that prayer down that I'd prayed. And so I started, and then I said, why do you want me to write my prayer down? And she said, well, I'm trying to learn English so I can pray better. And I closed up my notebook and laid down my pencil and I thought, I've got good news for you. The dialect of the area where we were was Isan. The dialect of Thai. And I said, you can talk to God in Esau. Right. And she looked at me, confused, for a moment. And I asked her, I said, what do you think, dream, imagine in? And she said, Esau. I said, because that's your heart language. You can just talk to God in your heart language. Right. Mm -hmm. See, God speaks them all. Mm -hmm. And you know, she looked at me and for a moment. She had that very confused. And all of a sudden, her facial expression totally changed. I said, new believer, new Christian. And she said, you mean Jesus hears Esau? And I said, yeah. I don't. <laughs> but he does. And that was just like the light went off with her. Listen, there's not a Thai way and an American way. There is one way, and that's Jesus. Christmas is exclusive. That bothers some people. There's a lot of it that, that well, you, you just believe that you're right and everybody else is wrong. No, that's what I don't want to believe. I believe that the Bible's way is right. 
in every other way is wrong. I mean, you can't get around that. If Jesus is the only way, and that's the right, then yes, that does mean that every other way is wrong. I mean, there's no, there's no way around that. Christmas is exclusive. And Christmas demands a response. I can tell you today about football games that I've seen. And I can kind of give you a play-by-play -play of the big key points, you know. I, I can tell you about when Arkansas got robbed by the referee. And, and you know, I, I, could, I could go through that. You know, I, I could go point by point. And, and I could... It, and you can sit there and twiddle your thumbs and be bored, uh, Brother Randy, because I'm talking about Arkansas and not about OU and, and Boomer. And, uh, you know, I, I, <laughs> you could ignore me. You could listen politely. But when I get through with the story of a football game, you could put that out of your mind and never, ever Think about it again. Why? Wow, because it's trivial. I mean, let, let's face it. Sports have no eternal meaning. I love them. I enjoy them. They're not about heaven and hell. I sometimes get a little frustrated when I hear people talking about the, the, a boys club football game. They went to battle. It was a war. I think, oh, come on. We've got some folks in our church, you know what it is to go to battle and go to war. By the way, thank you. Football is not like battle and war. There's no real consequence to who wins the game. But when you hear the story of Christmas, there is a demanded response. Because it's Jesus. And when you hear about Jesus, you must respond to that. Amen. Now you can reject it. And you can say, I'm not going to believe. I'm, I'm, I'm. You can do that. You have a choice. But you've got to respond. Now the proper response is one of faith. Faith. F-A-I-T-H. Forsaking all I trust him. Because there's one way. So I'm going to put everything else out of my mind and I'm just going to trust Jesus. If you know Jesus, then what are you going to do? You're going to worship. Matthew chapter 2. Those, those shepherds, what did they do? They worshiped the Lord. Those watching, what did they do? They brought gifts. They sacrificed our offering. Why? Because they've been presented with Jesus and they had to do something. There's a response. You've you got to do something. I remember one night during a revival. I think they were sitting maybe in the pew behind Miss Jackie. Miss Linda, Miss Gracie, I think maybe about that pew. And there was a young man I knew him. I'd shared the gospel with him. Preacher was preaching. And he was preaching about there's only one way to be saved, and that's Jesus. And I don't remember the, the words that the guy said, but he rolled his eyes and shook his head and you know what? That was a response. Yeah. Wasn't the right response. Right. 
Some of them hear about Jesus and get mad. Some people hear that there's only one way to be saved, and that angers them. They don't understand that. They reject that. But they've responded. When you hear the message of Christmas, there's a response. What's yours? What's your response to Jesus? Christmas changed history. Has Christmas changed you? Listen, I'll tell you, Christmas changed our family when my brother was born. For ten and a half years, I was the baby of the family. <laughs> with all of the blessings that comes with that position. And he came and stole my birthright. <laughs> I was no longer the baby of the family. And it changed our family. Grandma and Grandpa didn't come to see me anymore. They came to see him. I happened to be there. <laughs> Jesus, Christmas, changed the world has Jesus changed you has your perspective been changed lost people may have bewilderment and even anger about the exclusiveness of Jesus but when you know Jesus it brings awe and wonder that there is a way at all How gracious God is that he made a way for me to get to heaven. Mm -hmm. That God made a way for me to enjoy life. Amen. Amen. I can have fun because of Jesus. With every head bowed, every eye closed, let me just ask you this morning before we get ready to, to close today. Do you know Jesus? Have you trusted Jesus? Has Jesus changed you? Made you new? If this was your last Christmas on earth, do you know where your next Christmas will be? Hey, I know. If this was my last Christmas on earth, I'm going to spend my next Christmas with Jesus. Do you know that? If you don't, would you talk to someone today before you leave this place? What a great time to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior as we celebrate his coming for us. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would just encourage us. Lord, minister to us. Bless us. Lord, those that know you that will worship you. And Lord, those that don't know you, God, I pray that They'll respond today with faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Thank you, God, for loving us. In your name we pray. Amen.